Hey there, my beautiful, lovely friends. So I just wanted to do a quick intro on the video clip you're gonna see next, which is my work clothes. I, the best way I know to describe it, I wear these clothes to work at least once a week, many times all week long. Um, they are historically based and you're gonna see from the skin out, I dress the dummy. I do wanna caveat that my dummy is a half size too big for me. <laughs> So I got all the clothes on the dress dummy, but my poor breast dress dummy is very tightly um, compacted in here. Um, you're gonna see me dress her, and I will do a little bit of a video audio dialogue so you can see, um, and I'll explain each layer. Uh, the one thing I didn't put on my dress dummy that I kind of waved in front of the camera is the woolen petticoat. I made a woolen petticoat and it, um, ties in the front and then the back ties in the, sorry, <laughs> it's, it's a split two piece. So it's not like a regular skirt. It's more of a, uh, 17th century, 18th century, 18th century type petticoat. Um, because I didn't have enough, uh, faux wool. <laughs> this is not real wool. This is polyester. Um, it has kind of a texture like wool but it's not wool and it's what I had to try out the pattern. I do wear it when it's really cold. If we're going to go out walking and I'm wearing this, I'll slide the petticoat on underneath my layers, but I don't wear it a whole lot, mostly because I want to make a quilted petticoat or get some actual wool fabric and make one. So that's an accessory I do wear. I just don't have a lot of it. This is wool. This jacket is wool. It's lined in linen. And this is real wool, and it is also lined in linen. Now the skirt of the outfit you're gonna see is the front panel is cotton and the back is a poly blend. And I am a big proponent of using scraps and using materials you have on hand. Um, this shirt, for example, is made out of a sheet. Um, and all of the linen and cotton undergarments are either sheets or, well, I think the bralette that I made and the chemise are actually 100% linen, but they are cast offs from another project. So I am a firm believer in using what you have and using natural fibers, if at all possible. Now, the front closure of this jacket is plastic snaps. Um, if I did this again, I would probably put buttons, but this works really well and it's what I have. I did put buttons. These are cast off buttons from another project. Um, I think they're from an old suit jacket that I had that I cut up for something. And I did back them with plastic cast off buttons I had from other projects. Uh, the buttons that are on this blouse are actually buttons that I had to buy. I did have to buy them, but I was looking for wooden buttons and I didn't find any. So, um, I hope you enjoy this video and welcome to history bounding in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, so here we start with the bralette. It is 100% linen, it's handmade, and it is so comfortable. I cannot stress enough how comfortable this is compared to modern bras. It also gives a different silhouette, which I enjoy. They are tied on the side, I have several pair. They're very comfortable. My dress dummy is not quite my size, so I really had to scrunch it down to get it tied completely down. Um, I hand sewed this one, so there's nothing machined on this. And it does make a difference in the fit. The cording is cotton lucette cord I made, and there are little metal aglets on the end and all of the eyelets are also hand sewn. Next is the linen cami, and that generally just goes over the bralette because, you know, occasionally you sweat and it soaks up all that, and it's really nice and comfortable. After the cami are the crotchless drawers. Now I've been asked to model these, and 
I can't seem to get my boyfriend and I in the same room to get a good picture. So instead I'm putting them on the dress dummy. And I have originally made all of them to snap. And then I found that they were too tight some days and too loose other days. So I put ties on all of them. These are very, very comfortable. The pants tie below the knee, or you can leave them loose if you wanted to. Um, I really enjoy them. I don't have to, um, I mean, literally you just sit on the toilet. There's no fabric that gets in the way, nothing. It's, they're very comfortable. Next is the cotton petticoat. I actually have three cotton petticoats. They're all slightly different style, but this is the one I like the most and I will probably be making myself another one. It's made from the same sheet fabric that my blouse is made of that you'll be seeing. Now this is the red woolen that I sometimes wear for warmth. It's an optional layer and I usually wear it after the cotton petticoat, so it's up next to the skin. Um, it ties in both the front and the back. This is the silk taffeta petticoat. This is leftover silk from another project. And it is a three-tiered petticoat. It gives a wonderful rustle sound when you walk. And it only goes to a little bit below the knees. It's not a very long one. The next petticoat is a scrap poly blend plaid. Um, this was the first petticoat I had actually made for his, my history bounding work clothes. Um, I do not like the pattern. I will probably not make another one of this. Um, what you can't see really very clearly at the bottom is it's been taken up about two inches because it was too long. Um, here's the cotton shirt and this was made from scrap sheet material and I apologize you can tell I don't dress my dummy very often in a full set of outf of clothes <laughs> I'm having trouble dressing her um, I love the blouse pattern on this and I will I have a silk one actually cut out I just need to sew her together I really love this blouse pattern it turned out really well Next is the woolen vest, and um, I am deliberately choosing the woolen, the blue woolen one, because I'm going to match it with the skirt. And this woolen vest is from scrap wool that I used the wool for something else. I don't remember what it was. Beautiful uh, buttons that I retrieved from another outfit. I really struggled with the collar on this vest. So it doesn't lay very flat without tacking stitches, and you can't see those, but they are tacked around the collar a little bit. And about here as I'm getting my dress dummy fixed, I realized that I forgot the skirt, and the skirt should go on over the shirt before the vest. So, <laughs> of course, when you're dressing something else, you sometimes forget. So the walking skirt is... Um, I'm actually quite proud of this skirt. I've made three iterations of this and this is my favorite pattern. So my next skirt will be more following this pattern. And the front panel is wide enough to go all the way to the pockets. And then the two back panels create that pleating and all of the skirt volume so that you can walk comfortably. But um, this is a very lightweight skirt. I wear it a lot in the spring. Um, dressing the dummy was a little tricky in the back, but as you can see here, the pleating in the back, and I don't have the back panel hooked all the way down. I don't need to. There's a, there's a privacy placket in the back, and there are pockets on the side, and the pockets are nice and deep. They can hold a cell phone. Next comes the woolen jacket, and I generally only need this when I'm going outside, and I wear a nice hat and scarf to go with it. Um, getting this on the dress dummy is a little tricky. It's definitely fit me, not the dress dummy, and I'm a little bit more squishy. Um, but I've had the jacket the longest of pretty much all of the pieces of my history bounding work clothes, because um, that was one of the first things I made because I was cold all the time. And 
it's very comfortable. It goes over any of my modern sweaters that I want to wear with my history bounding working skirts. Um, I just love the silhouette. And here's where you can see the layers. And if you look at the bottom of the walking skirt, it's got a little black band around it. That's the kick plate. Uh, there's the first petticoat, the silk petticoat, the cotton petticoat, and then you can see the bloomers underneath or the split drawers. Um, all very, very comfortable. I tried to change the lighting on the screen a little bit. Um, the jacket is green and the skirt is blue with a flower pattern on it. And I apologize, I'm videotaping this in the garage in my studio, so the lighting isn't really great. Um, this is the close-up of the snap closure of the woolen jacket. Uh, the pattern is actually from my Tudor Taylor jacket pattern. Um, and the next one I make will probably have wooden or metal buttonholes, but I really like the snaps. They work great. Um, I wanted to show you the close-up of the hook for the watch fob. It's just a little piece of bias type binding. There's a pocket for the watch that reaches around so you, the, the chain dangles nicely. And then I put an inside pocket on the vest to carry my pins for work because I'm constantly losing pins and I just love this addition. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully this inspires you for your history bounding work clothes.